so basically we discussed uh, why we need exactly variables and what are the different kinds of variables that we can create as part of a class right we have discussed something called static variables something called non static variables we have already also discussed read only variables and uh, constant variables right we also discussed what is the difference between them right now uh, today we are going to discuss something called operators right right uh, okay so as of now what we discuss suppose i'm creating one uh, something like this integer x equals to 10 then can anybody tell me in this statement what is int what is x and what is this value 10 int is data type yes integer is a data type x, x is variable name x is variable name 10 is assigned value uh, 10 is the assigned value, but uh, we, are, we can say it's a integer literals, right? In one of the session, we have discussed something called a literals. So we have different okay. kinds of literals like integer literals, character literals, floating point number literals. But technically, we can say it's a fixed value, which we are assigned to uh, some uh, location. And that location is identified by this variable called x. And that location size is going to be provided based on this data type, right? As it is an integer data type, so in this location, we can only going to store integer type values, right? So, so uh, one, one thing that you need to remember, whenever you are developing any application, your application is incomplete without operator. That means every time you are going to develop an application, then you are you need to be, you must be using something called a variable. Without variable, your application is incomplete, sorry. Without operator, your application is going to be incomplete, right? So if you are developing any kind of application, whether it is a desktop application, whether it is a web application, whether it is a console application, or whether it is a web services, you know, any, irrespective of the type of the application, operator is one of the concept which is going to be used frequently. Without operator, you cannot write any logic, right? If you want to implement some kind of a business logic, then definitely you need something called the operator, right? And in C sharp, we have different kind of operators that we are going to discuss. Okay, uh, le le let us take an example and understand this better. Suppose I am opening my, my calculator. So if, if only the digit are there, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Using this digit, if these functionalities are not there, Right. So, so if you look at my screen, my calculator is showing. If in my calculator 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this digit are there, but there is no option for this modulus or plus minus division, then is it the use? Can I use anything? Can I perform anything? No. Because without these functionalities, this is the useless. Right. And this functionality, whatever you provided here in this calculator application, these are nothing but one one operator. Right. So if you want to perform any operation, right, behind the scene, we are going to use something called operators, right? Suppose I am writing 10, I'm writing plus, and I'm writing 20. So this plus, whenever I press for this plus button, there is some logic or there is some uh, mechanism or there is some business logic is implemented behind the scene. When I write plus, that means it is going to perform an addition operation. And the plus in this case is nothing but one of the operator, right? So if you are developing any kind of application, then operator is the fundamental, right? Without using operator, your application is not going to be completed, right? If you want to develop application, you want to implement business logic. And if you want to business logic, or if you want to perform different kind of operation, that operation might be some logical operation, right? There might be some arithmetical operation, right? So, so if you want to implement such a uh, business logic, such operations in your programming, then operator is must. You should know what are the different kind of operators provided in C-sharp language and what is the use of all these operators in detail. So in today's session, we are going to discuss this thing. Is that clear? What is our today's agenda? Yes. Okay. Now, let, let, let us first uh, see the definition. Operators are symbols that are used to perform operations on operator. 
So operators are nothing but some kind of a symbols, and that is used to perform some operation on the operand. Here we need to understand first what is operand. Okay, let me uh, go to my screen. So I'm writing something like this: integer y equals to twenty, right? And here I'm writing integer z equals to uh, ten plus twenty. And here I'm also writing integer p equals to x plus y, right? Now you can see in this case how many operand operator I'm using here. Can anybody tell me? One. Any 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 other answer? Two. Two. No, ten so, plus two. Yeah. So here I'm using two operators. First operator is this plus one, and the second operator is this equal to. So this is also an operator, na? This is one assignment operator. This is addition operator, right? So operator. So in this example, I am using operator. So operator works on operand. Then what is operand? See, uh, the thing that you need to remember is operand might be a value or might be a variable. In this example, this plus is an operator which is working with two operand. What are the operand? Ten and twenty, and this operand is directly available. In this example, plus is the operator which is working on two operand. What are the operand? X and Y. Here, the operand is a variable. So the operand it might be a value or it might be a variable that you need to understand. And operator is always going to work on operand, right? In this case, whatever value we have, we are assigning that value to this operator, this variable. So here, this is the operand. Uh, equal is operand which is always going to assign the right hand side value to the left hand side variable is that clear consider this example suppose i am writing 2 plus 3 equals 5 here 2 and 3 are operands and plus and equals are operators so the operators are used to manipulate the variables and values used in the program right now <coughs> we need to understand the different types of operators See, operators are basically categorized based on the operations they are performing, or you can also categorize based on the operand number of operand on which they are operating. If you are going with the first classification, the types of operations they are performing, we can divide the operator into seven categories. Arithmetical operator, relational operator, logical operator, bitwise operator, assignment, unary, and ternary. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the seven types of operators based on the type of operations they perform. Further, if you want to categorize on the number of operands they are going to work, then you can categorize the operator into three categories. What are these? Unary operator. The operator is going to work with only one operand. Binary operator. The operator is going to work with two operands. Ternary operator. The operator is going to work with three operands. Now you can see. These five operators are belonging to one category called binary operator. What it means, <coughs> the operator showing in this diagram, right? All these operators are going to work with two operators. This is unary operator. And in this case, the operator is going to work with a single operator. This is ternary operator, which is also called as a conditional operator. In this case, the operator is going to work with three operators. Right. So if someone asks you uh, what are the different uh, types of operator, then you can say based on the type of operations, the operator are categorized into seven types. What are these? Arithmetic, relational, logical, b 2 edge assignment, unary, and ternary. But if I want to classify it based on the number of operands on which they are operating, then I can categorize the operators into three types. What are these? Binary operator, unary operator, and ternary operator. Binary operator means the operator is going to work with two operands. What is unary operator? The operator is going to work with single operand. What is ternary operator? The operator is going to work with two operands. If anybody having any doubt regarding this classification of operator, they can ask you now. Can you cite an example for uh, ternary operator? So in this in this article, I am going to explain everything of uh, all the type of operators, right? I am going to explain what is arithmetic operator, how to use all these operators. I am going to explain you logical operator, how to use this operator. Even I am going to explain you 
ternary operator, how exactly it is going to work, what is the syntax, in what scenario you are going to work with the example. Everything I'm going to discuss with the example in this session. So just I just want to know if anybody having any doubt regarding this classification of operator, they can ask me why it is the, why this logical operator is called as a binary operator. If any anybody having any doubt, they can ask like this. Example, I'm going to show you uh, uh, one by one. Okay. Yeah, fine. Okay, let's proceed. So in, in arithmetic operator, you can see there are five operators, plus, minus, multiplication, division, and modulus, right? Yes. If you want to perform any arithmetic operators in your programming language, then you can use these five operators. And, and I think there is no need to explain anything regarding this operator because everyone knows. So this plus operator is going to perform addition operation, minus is going to perform uh, minus operation, multiplication operation, division operation, and a modulus operation, right? Suppose uh, 10 plus 5. So you know what is the output, right? So you know what is the output is going to be. So if I'm adding 10 plus 5, uh, means the output is going to be 15. Subtraction, 10 minus 5 means 5. Multiplication, 2 into 3 equals to 6. Division operation, 10 divided 5, so, right? The output is going to be 2. Modulus operator, the remainder is going to be zero, right? So these are the uh, five categories of arithmetic operators that you can use in your application, right? So you can see, I think nothing to explain in this example here, I'm adding two numbers. So I'm taking two numbers, 10 and 20 and 10. I'm adding this subtraction, multiplication, right? A division and a modulus. So, you can see the output, right? So if I'm adding 10 plus 20, result is 30, 10, uh, 20 minus 10, uh, right? Uh, 20 minus 10, the output is equal to 10, 20 into uh, 10, the output is going to be 220 divided by 10, the output is going to be two for division and for modulus, the remainder is going to be zero. So you need to remember these two. So this is the division and this is the modulus. In the modulus, it will be going to give you the reminder. What is the reminder if you perform 10 divided by two operations, right? So for example, right? Suppose I'm writing like this, 10. Right? So, and if it is like this, right? So, so 10, uh, here it is going to 2, and the reminder is going to be 0, right? So in this case, in the case of a division, the output is going to be 2, and in the case of modulus, the output is going to be 0. So what you can see here, for a division, the output is going to be 2, and for modular, modulus operation, the output is going to be 0, right? So, so one more important thing that uh, you need to remember. See, uh, whenever you are going to perform the addition, okay, let me change the data type. Let me introduce one another data type, long number three equals to 50. And in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm just adding this long three. As soon as I add this operator, uh, this variable, I'm getting a compiled time error. Can anybody tell me why I'm getting this compiled time error? Different data type. One is int, another one is long. Right. So whenever you are using a different data type, then you always need to remember what is the largest size of the data type. Which one is the largest one, right? Among this integer and long, we already know. So this 50 and 20 and 10, if you are adding the value will be 8, it can store in an integer variable. But the size of this integer data type is 4 byte and size of long data type is 8 byte. As the size of long data type is 8 byte, so the largest data type uh, used in this expression is long. That means it, it might be chance that you are storing some value which cannot be uh, fit inside an integer variable. That's why it is giving you error. So always you need to remember which one is the largest data type that will be going to be your uh, desti uh, destination data type, right? So in this case, if you want to store, you need to store this on a long variable, right? Then only you will get this, right? So this is also you need to remember, 
right? Whenever you are using different kind of a data types in a expression, then the outcome is always going to be depend on the largest data type used in the expression. In this case, the largest data type is long. So once you are performing this operation, the output is going to be in the form of long data. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So then the second category, uh, which the data type is assignment operator. Right. The assignment operators are basically used to assign a value that is available in the right side to the left side variable. Right. In this case, the value is there in the right side and the variable is there in the left side. And whatever value or literal you have in the uh, right side, that will be assigned to the left hand side variable. Right. So you can see uh, we have simple assignment. Right. Here I am creating some literal 10, 20, and A. And I am storing those 10, 20, and A to some variable called A, P, and C, S. And here this is nothing but your assignment operator. Right. So the assignment operator role and responsibility is to, so this is your right hand side uh, literal or values. And it will assign this right hand side values to the left hand side variable, right? So this is simple assignment. And this is a compound assignment, you can say. Compound assignment, again, categorized into four types. Compound uh, uh, add, this is subtract, this is multiply, and this is division, and this is modulus, right? So in this case, so sometimes in your application, you will see that some, some of the developer have written a code like this, A plus equals to B. A plus equals to B means what? A equals to A plus B. Right? So A plus equals to B means A equals to A plus B. That you need to remember like this. This operator is the combination of a plus and equal operator. It is used to add the left operand with the right operand and then assign to the left operand. That means in this case, it is used to add the left operand with the right operand. Right? Once it adds the left operand with the right operand, whatever may be the value, it will assign that value to the left side operand. So in this case, so left operand is A, right operand is B. So it will add A plus B. So A plus B means 5 plus 6, 11. Once it adds, then it assign the value to the variable on the left. Left, what is left? Left is A. So it will assign 11 to A. So also, if you execute this statement, then it will store 11 into the variable A. This is called add assignment. On the same in the case of a subtract assignment, you can say A minus equals to B means A equals to A minus B. So in this case, what it will do? Now it will subtract B from A and whatever may be the result, it will store that result inside the A variable. Similarly, multiply assignment. A multiply equals to B. It means A equals to A into B. That means what? Now it will multiply the left side operand with the right side operand and whatever may be the value, that value it will store inside the left uh, left side operand, right? So in this case, suppose A equals 10, B equals to 5. So A into B equals to 50. It will assign 50 to the left hand side operand, which is nothing but in this case A, right? And this is division assignment. So A minus uh, A division equals to B means A equals to A division B. So in this case, it will first perform the division operation between A by B. And once the operation completed, whatever the result, that result is going to be stored inside the A variable, right? And the same in the case of a modulus operation, right? Let us see one example so that uh, we'll get better idea. Thank you. Is anybody asking anything? Yes, going through. Okay. Okay. See, so this is a very simple, I think, no need to explain. So if I'm writing x plus equals to 10, it means x equals to x plus 10. So in this case, x variable is 15. So x plus equals to 10 means what? 15 plus 10. And what it will store in the x variable? 25, right? Again, I'm initializing x variable with 20. So here, x equals to x minus b. X minus b, x minus equals 5 means whatever value in the x, it will minus 5 
and the result will be going to store in the x value. Currently, right. x value is 20, 20 minus 5 equals to what? 15. So in this case, uh, in this case, it is going to store 25. In this case, it is going to store what? 15, right? So because x is 20 and we are dividing 20, uh, we are uh, reducing or uh, we are minus 5 from the 20, right? Again, we are initialized x with 15 and here uh, we are multiplying 15 into 5. So what will be the output here? 75. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. So here we are initializing x as 25. So 25 divided by 5, right? 25 divided by 5 means the output is going to be 5, right? And here, uh, x again 25, 25 modulus 5, 25 modulus 5 means 5 into 5, 25. So the remainder is going to be 0. So as per our logic, the output should be 25, 15, 75, 5, and a 0. Let's execute the application. 25, 15, 75, 5, and a 0 or not? Yeah, correct. 25, 15, 75, 5, and a 0. See, here, uh, uh, here what I'm doing, now I'm using this uh, 10. So instead of 10, what you can do, integer y equals to 10, right? Instead of this 10, you can also put here y, right? Here I'm uh, minusing 5. So let initialize y equals to 5 and let's put y here, right? Again, I need to reinitialize the y equals to 5 and I can put y instead of this 5. Right. Again, uh, here I can initialize this y with 5 and I can put that y here also. I can initialize y equals to 5. Even I can also put y here also. So what we see in our example, uh, in our document, this is the same thing. Previously, I, I already told you, operators are going to work on operand. The operand might be a variable or might be a value. So in the previous example, I have shown you working with values. In this example, I'm showing you working with the variables, okay. right? Yeah. So now if you run this application, again, you will get the same output. You can see you are getting the same output. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. Now, so uh, now, now this is important, right? Whenever you are going to work with any uh, uh, real-time application, the relational operators and the logical operators are going to be used frequently, right? So let us first discuss the relational operators, then we'll understand the logical operators. If you look at the diagram, we have six relational operators, less than, less than equals to, greater than, greater than equals to, double equals to, and then not equals to. Let's understand these things, right? So the relational operators are also known as a comparison operator. It means what? Now it will compare the values and after comparison, it will come to a situation or it will come to a solution whether the comparison is true or false, right? By comparing the expression or by comparing the values, it will come to you a solution. It will give you a solution whether the comparison is true or the comparison is false. So let us understand one by one equals to operator, right? So this operator is used to return true, right? Whenever I'm saying a relational operator and a logical operator, the output is not uh, the output. Uh, the output is always going to be either true or false. Apart from true or false, you cannot get anything else, right? So if let, let's start with this equal to operator. This operator is used to return true if the left hand side value is equal to the right hand side, right? That means it might be a value or it might be an expression. But if both left hand side value and right hand side value are equal, then this operator is going to return you true, else it will return you false. So for example, if I'm writing 5 equals to equals to 3, in this case, 5 is the uh, left hand side value and 3 is the right hand side value. In this case, both are not equal. As both are not equal, so it is going to return you false, right? Instead of 5 and, uh, 5 and 3, if I'm writing 5 and 5, then this is going to return me true, right? You need to understand this. Then not equal operator. This is just opposite of equal operator. In equal operator, if both are equal, then it will return true. And in the case of a not equal operator, if both are not equal, then it is going to return you true. 
if you both are equal then it is going to return you false for example if i'm writing 5 not equals to 3 it means both are not equal then it is going to return you true is that clear did you understand what is the difference between this equal and not equal yeah okay yes sir okay similarly there is something called less than and less than equals to right it will check whether the left hand operand uh, value is less than the right hand side value if right if it is true then it will return true but in this case you can see in the left hand side the value is 5 in the right hand side the value is 3 so is 5 is less than 3 no 5 is not less than 3 so the condition is going to be false and in this case it will check whether the left hand side value is less than or equals to right hand side value right then it will return you true see uh, in this case if i write 5 less than 5 what will be the output false false because 5 is not less than 5 see it is going to be false but in this case less than or equals to so what it will be going to return it is going true, to return true. you true because 5 is not less than 5 but 5 is equals to 5 so both the condition it is going to check whether the left hand side operand value is less than the right hand side operand value no it is not less than then again it will check whether the left hand side operand value is equal with the right hand side operand value yes it is equal so it will return true either of the condition is satisfied then it will return true for example if i am writing 5 less than equals to 3 the condition is satisfied no no uh, not the condition suppose i am writing this 7 so the condition is satisfied na? because 5 is less than 7 so the condition is satisfied it is not going to check whether the second operator is equal or not the first operator condition satisfied it is going to return true right but if the first operator condition is not satisfied then it, in this case 5 is not less than 5 the condition is not satisfied the second operator it is going to check whether 5 is equals to 5 yes 5 is equals to 5 so it will return true. but instead of 5 if i write 4 then it will check first 5 is less than 4 no it will check the second operator 5 is equals to 4 no so both the condition is well so it is going to return you false is false. that clear is that clear yeah yeah, yeah. and it is and the greater than is just the op opposite of less than right in this case the condition is being changed to less than or equals to in this case it will check whether the uh, whether the left hand side operand value is greater than or equals to right so this is just the opposite of less than on the less than or equals to right let us uh, see this practically So here I'm creating uh, two variables, so one with number five and one is number two. And this is, you can see the result variable type is going to be Boolean. Uh, why? Now, because these logical operators, what we have discussed, always going to return the value in Boolean, right? So instead of a Boolean, let, let's try to write integer. What I'm getting, I'm getting an error. Why I'm getting an error? It is clearly showing cannot implicitly convert uh, type bool to int. That means if you are using this equal equal operator, then it is going to return you something called a Boolean data type. And you cannot store implicitly or automatically a Boolean value into a integer value. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So you need to always the operator, always this logical operator is going to return the data in Boolean format. So number equals to equals to number two. So number one is five equals to equals to number two is 10. So what will be the output of this statement? True or false? False. False. So the output is going to be false. Number one is greater than number two. What is number one five? What is number two 10? So false. number one is greater than number two. False. The output? False. Number one is less than number two. What is the output? True. True. Number one is less than equals to number two. What is the output? Yeah, true. True. How? No, no. Is this number one is greater than equals to number two? It is true or false? That is false. 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 And this is going to be true. 
right? True, true. Right? And this is number one, not equals to number two. And what is the output? True. True. Because uh, number one is five and number two is 10 and both are not equal. And that is what this operator saying. Okay? Number one is not equals to number two. So it is going to return you true. Right? So let's run this application and see the output. Sorry, sir. Uh, is this screen share or is it shared or not? The screen? Yeah. The screen is already shared, no? everyone watching. So my screen is visible to all of you? Yeah, yeah, it is visible. Okay, it's my problem. I will draw, uh, disconnect uh, again. Yeah, connect. You, just, you just disconnect and connect again and please check your internet connection. Yes. Okay, fine. So now let's run this application. So see, the first output is false, false. Second output is false. Third one is true. Fourth one is false. Fifth one is true. And the last one is true. So you understand what is and how to use this operator. See, in this case, we are just uh, uh, comparing with some number. But going forward, I will show you the exact use of this operator. <laughs> the appropriate use of this operator. These operators are going to be used while you are making a complex expression, right? Uh, if you are going to use or if you are going to make a complex expression, then at that time, this uh, logical operator and this relational operator going to play an important role, right? Going forward, as we progress in this uh, uh, course, I will show you the actual use of this operator, but the fundamental and the basic uh, use of this operator is this one. So it is going to compare two values and based on the uh, compare result, it will either return you true or it will return you false, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, now we are going to discuss another category of operator that is logical operator. Again, the logical operator is also going to return you true or false, right? But the difference is that the logical operators are mainly used in conditional statements and loops for evaluating a condition. These operators are going to work with Boolean expression. The different types of logical operators supported in C sharp are logical or logical and and logical not. The first thing is that they are going to work with which type of expression? Boolean. 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 Right. So Boolean means the operator uh, that you are going to use in the left hand side and in the right hand side must be of type Boolean. Right. So let's see. So uh, this logical or, so I think you already aware of this uh, three operator and or and not. This operator is used to return true if both the Boolean expressions are uh, true or one of the expression is true. And it will return false if both the expressions are false. So you need to remember, if you are using this logical operator, if both the right hand side and the left hand side expression are false, then it is going to return false, else it will return true. If one of the expression is true, it will return true. If both of the expression is true, then again, it is also going to return true. Only case where it will be going to return false, if both the expression that is used in the left hand side and the right hand side of this operator is false, then only it is going to return false. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. And in this case, it is also just opposite of a logical or, right? In this case, if both the expression or both the operand used in the left hand side and right hand side of this operator, is true, then only it is going to return true. If one of the operand is true or both are false, then in that case, it is going to return you false. Clear or not? Clear. True, true equals true. And Sorry? if one of them is false. No, no. In yeah, this case, if true. one of the expression is false, then it is going to return you false. Mm -hmm. If both are false, then also it is going to return you false. Only case where it will, re it will return you true if both the expression are true. I'll show you practically, okay? And this operator is used to return true if the condition is uh, in expression is not satisfied, right? It is just uh, uh, the opposite. If true is there, then it is going to return false. If false is there, then it is going to return you true and it is going to work on a single operator, right? Okay, so, so for clarity, let us see this practically, right? So here you can see, I have taken two variables. One is true, another is false, and uh, this z. Why I'm taking z? Because the output is going to be of a Boolean type. So you can see 
if i am creating other type of variables like uh, this so you will get error why because it is saying cannot implicitly convert type bool to int so always if you are using the logical operators the result is going to be of a boolean type so in this case right so x is true y is false so what will be the output in this case false false right in this case x is true y is false and we are using logical of or operator as for the or operator if either one is true or both are true then it is going to return true if both are false then only it is going to return false so in this case x is true and true, y is true. false one of the expression is true means the it will return you true right yes right in this case not x what is the x x is it true and not x means it will return false. you false so false true and false false true and false now now see why it is written false because one of the operand is false you understood na if both are true then it is only going to return true see true and i am writing true so both the or left hand side and right hand side operand are true in this case it is going to return me true see it is returning me true right true and true the result is true if i am writing true and false then the result is going to be false false you can see false and if i am writing false and false then the result is also going to be false false right false so simply if both the operand are true then the and logical and operator is going to return you true in this case if both are false then it is going to return you false else it will return true and in this case it is just uh, negates the result if true it will return false if it is false then it will return you true is that clear yeah yes sir okay. now these are the simple operator we have discussed so far now we are going to discuss something interesting and uh, uh, these things you need to understand carefully right now we are going to use and discuss the bit wise operator in c sharp the bit wise operator is going to perform bit by bit operation or bit by bit processing and and the most important thing they can only be used with a integer data type integer data type means which what are the types belongs to integer category it might be a sort data type it might be a data type it might be a long data type right it might be a short right it might be u int or it might be u long so these are the data type uh, on which the bit wise operator going to be work if you are creating okay, any message is that fine pratik yes sir yes sir thank you okay so you can see the bit wise operator is going to perform the operation bit by bit right i will show you how bit by bit operation is going to perform but before that you have to remember one point if you want to perform this bit by bit operations or if you want to perform bit wise operation and if you want to work with the bit wise operators then the only data type which can support is integer you cannot use this bit wise operator on other data type like floating point character decimal boolean they are not supported what supported only integer data type right okay. now let us understand see if i am using double ampersand then what is this is a logical or if i am using sorry if i am using double pipe symbol then that is logical or if i am using single pipe symbol then this is bit wise or so you need to remember this thing if i am using double pipe that means the operation is going to be a logical or operation if i am using a single pipe the operation is going to be bit wise or operation if i am using double pipe then that operator is going to work on the operand which is are of type boolean if i am using a single uh, uh, pipe symbol then this operator is going to work on the operand which type should be integer is that clear what is the difference between single pipe and double pipe Yeah, yeah. So if you are using double pipe, some back ah. is common.
right? So this is the bitwise OR. So bitwise OR operator is represented by a single pipe symbol. Yeah. This operator performs the bitwise operation on the bit on the corresponding bits of the two operands involved in the operation. In one of the bits or both bits are one, it will give one. If not, it will give you zero. Let us understand the what I have mentioned here. Let us understand with an example. Suppose I am having two integer number, right? Okay. One of the integer number stores 12, another no, integer number stores 25. And if I perform this bit wise or operation, the output is going to be 29. Right? If it is a plus operation, the output is going to be 25 plus 12. It is going to be 37. But here I am using bitwise or operation and I am getting 29. It is interesting or not? How we are getting that we will see. Right. First of all, whatever the number is there, it is in the form of a decimal. Right. Then we need to convert this number into its binary equivalent. Give me one minute. See, so, so whenever you are going to perform the bitwise operation, then first of all, you need to identify what is the binary representation of that number, right? We have, we are taking uh, 12 and 15. So first we need to understand what is the binary representation of this decimal number 12 and of this decimal, decimal number 25. If you go to the internet and if you type 12 binary number, you will get the result. The binary number is 1101. See? I'm taking the 12 binary number as 1901. And as everything is going to be represented in byte format, and one byte is nothing but it is equivalent to 8 bit, right? 8 bit means you need to append uh, additional zeros to the left hand side of the number. So in this case, the binary equivalent uh, of this number is 1101, but as it is 8 bit format, the computer is going to store the data in 8 bit format. I added these four zeros to the left hand side of the number. Similarly, 25. So what is the binary representation of 25 means? It is 11001. So you can see I have written 11001 and to make it 8 bit, I have added three zeros, right? So you understand how, what is the binary representation of 12 and 25 now? So bitwise or operation perform the bit by bit operation. Whenever it find both the bits are one or one of the bit as one, then the output is going to be one, right? If both the bit are zero, the output is going to be zero. So let's see. So in this case, this is zero and this is one. I'm just adding these two numbers, right? I'm just adding these two number. And I'm not exactly adding. I'm just going to perform a bitwise OR operation. See, OR operation, you know. What is the use of OR operation? OR operation means if either one of the expression is true, then it is going to return true. If you both are false, then it is going to return false. So in this case, one is zero and another one is one, zero one. So the output is going to be one. In this case, both are zero. So the output is going to be zero. In this case, one, first one is one and second one is zero. So one of the expression or one of the value is one. So the output is going to be one. In this case, both are one, here one and here one. So according to our operation, when both are true, then it is going to return you true. So it is in this case one. And here zero and the one. So the output is going to be one. And the rest three are zero. So this is nothing but zero, zero, zero. Now, if you take this number and if you find the, what is the equivalent decimal number, right? Then you will see that the equivalent decimal number for this is, what is 29. You understood how this bitwise or operation work? Anybody having any doubt regarding this bitwise or? No, sir. Okay, clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. See, if the operands are of, of type bool, say in this case, I am uh, showing you an example of an integer type. But it is also possible that the operand might be of type boolean, right? 
So in this case, uh, okay, in this case, instead of A and B as integer, you can also perform the bitwise operation on Boolean data type. But if you are using Boolean data type, then it will not perform the operation at a bitwise or operator, right? It will perform the operation as a logical operation, right? Okay, uh, let me show you this practically so that you will get better idea, right? So here I'm just printing console dot right line vector, right? So we are getting twenty nine. Is that fine? So you understand how we are getting twenty nine? Now, now let's see. So instead of a boolean data type, uh, instead of number, if I, I I can work also with boolean. Boolean uh, a equals to true and b equals to false right 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 so so if you are using this operator on the boolean data type then it will work like a work like logical form, right? If you are, if you already we have discussed, whenever we are performing the logical operation, then what will be the output? The output is going to be of Boolean type, right? And it will check if, uh, and we already discussed what is the functionality of a logical or. Logical or means if either of the expression is true, then it will return true, else it will return false, right? So in this case, A is true and B is false. So true and false, so it will store true in the output, right? So in the, in the previous example, we have seen the output is 29 because in that case, we are using the integer data type and we are performing the logical, uh, sorry, this bitwise or operation. The point that you need to remember is if you are using bitwise or operator on integer data type, then it is going to perform the bitwise or operation. But if you are using the bitwise operator or operator on Boolean data type, then it is not going to perform the bitwise or operation, rather it will perform the logical or operation. And we know whenever we are working with a logical operator, then the output is going to be either true and false. That's why it is mandatory to store the result in the Boolean type. But in this case, the output is going to be on decimal type, so you can store the output in the integer type. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Bitwise, uh, bitwise or is completed bitwise and. This is the same as bitwise or operator, but the difference is that if both the bit are one, then it is only going to return you one, right? So in bitwise, uh, the same way as we perform the bitwise or, the same way the bitwise and is there. See, if you are using a single ampersand, then it is going to be bitwise and operation. If you are using double ampersand, then what is that? That is logical and. So you need to remember single uh, ampersand bitwise and double ampersand bitwise. And uh, if you are using double ampersand, then that is logical and. Logical and operator is always going to work with a Boolean data type. Bitwise and operator, if you are using with integer data type, then it will perform the bitwise operation. If you are using the uh, bitwise and operator on Boolean data type, then it is going to perform the logical and operation that you need to remember, right? So in this case, you can see same, same. So we are taking the same example here, A equals to 12, B equals to 25, and we are just performing the bitwise and operation. You can see. So what is the output we are getting? We are getting eight. Let's see how. Now, first of all, first you need to convert the 12 into its equivalent binary number. Again, you need to convert the 25 into its equivalent binary number. And we get to know that this is the uh, binary representation of the decimal number 12, and this is the binary representation of the decimal number 25. Now we need to perform the bitwise and operation. And in the case of a bitwise and operation, when both the digit or when the, both the numbers are one, then the output is going to be one, else the output is going to be zero. See, zero and one. 
both are not one so the output is going to be zero in this case it is zero it is also zero so both are zero the output is going to be zero one zero so the output is going to be zero in this case both are one yes it is one and it is one both are one so the output is going to be one in this case zero and one so the output is going to be zero rest are zero so if you take this number and if you want to see what is its equivalent decimal number then you will see that it is nothing but eight you can see this is the equivalent number eight now let's see this so instead of this now see now let's run the application see you are getting eight or not that means whenever you are using a single ampersand symbol it is a bitwise operator if you are using this operator on integer data type then it is going to perform the bitwise or operation right but if you are using this bitwise operator on uh, bitwise and operator on boolean data type then it is going to perform logical and operation right logical and operation see in logical and operation you know if both are true then only it is going to return you true in this case one of the expression is true and one of the value or expression is going to be false so true and false what should be the result the result is going to be false right as it is going to perform the as the bitwise and operator is going to work like a logical and operator so whenever it uh, work like a logical and operator the return is going return type is going to be boolean type so if you try to store this value on integer data type then you will get an error so it will say that cannot convert type bool to int so you need to store the result in a bool data type so you can see it is false because on uh, both are not true if both are true then it is going to return true clear or not yes okay this is important and there is something called a bitwise xor right let us understand what is bitwise xor so bitwise xor operator is represented by this symbol right this operator performs a bitwise XOR operation on the corresponding bit of two operands. If the corresponding bit are different, it gives you one, right? Let us understand what it means. It means, first of all, you need to convert the uh, equivalent, uh, you need to convert the decimal number into its binary equivalent number. And now observe the bitwise, because this is XOR, right? Bitwise XOR operation, not AND. So in this case, whenever the two bits are different, then it is going to return you one. If two bits are same, then it is going to return you zero. So in this case, zero and one, both are different or same? Both are different. So it will return to one. In this case, it is zero and it is zero. That means both are same. So it is going to return you zero. In this case, this is one, and this is zero. Both bit are different, so it is written you uh, one. So in this case, this is one and this is one. Both bit are same, so it is going to return you zero. In this case, this is zero and this is one. Both are different, so it is going to return you one. And the rest of three are same, so it is going to return you zero. So the point that you need to remember is, in this case, if both the bit are different, then it is going to return you one. If both are same, if both are zero or both are one, it doesn't matter. It is going to return you zero. If one of the bit is zero and one of the bit is one, in that case only it is going to return you one. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So in this case, if you take this number and if you go to the internet and if you search what is its equivalent decimal number, you will see that why I'm not getting. 21 right so equivalent decimal number is 21 now let's see this right 
21. Now you cannot perform the logical. Okay, let's try. I have never tried, but let's try to perform the logical operation. Logical R is equal to true and a symbol. Right. So I never try this one, but let's try what we are getting. True. So because one of the expression is true and one of the expression is false. So both are different. So it is written true, right? And if you use false, false and false means both are false. So in this case, it will return you false, right? And again, if both are going to be true, then what it will return? Can anybody tell me? false right so if both are true then it is going to return you false right is that clear so so the yes, point sir. that you need to remember is the this operator behavior it changes when it work on integer data type and when it work on boolean data type so the bitwise operator will work uh, will perform the bit by bit operation on the integer data type, but if you use the same bitwise operator on Boolean data type or Boolean value, then it is going to perform the logical operation, right? This is the point that you need to remember. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. And there is something called the unary operator, but before discussing, let's take a break for five minutes. Okay. Is that fine? Take a break. Now we are going to discuss another category of operator, which is unary operator. Unary operator means what? Now this operator is going to work with only one operand or with only one value, right? The, the, the operators which belongs to uh, this category are increment operator and a decrement operator, right? We have already discussed one of the operator that is not operator in previously, but the, uh, in okay, let me show you, we have already discussed. Mm -hmm. So you can see this logical not operator, it is also a unary operator because it also work on a single operand. But these operator are binary operator because they work on two different, uh, you can say two different uh, two operands or two values, right? So whenever a operator work on a single operand or single value, that operator is going to be called as a unary operator. And this logical not operator is a unary operator. Apart from that, we have also two different uh, unary operators. One is a uh, increment operator, which you can say plus plus, and another is a decrement operator that is minus minus. Okay, let us understand these two uh, operators because these are these two operators are going to be used uh, very frequently when you are going to work with any kind of a looping state, right? So the increment operator is a unary operator. It operates on a single operand only. Again, this increment operator is divided into two categories. One is post increment, another is pre increment. So what is post increment? The post increment operators are the operator that are used at the suffix to its variable, right? That means what? Now it is placed after the variable. So once you have declared the variable, then after the variable name, this operator will be used as a suffix. Right. And what is the use of this uh, plus plus operator means now it will increase the value of the variable by one. Right. So you will use this plus plus if you are using the plus plus operator as a suffix that is after the variable name, then it is called as a post increment operator. And the use of this post increment operator is to use the value of the variable by one. Similarly, pre increment increment is same as post increment but in this case the operator is going to be used before the variable name that is that means you will use the operator as a prefix here you are using the operator as a suffix here right you can use see the word suffix suffix means after the variable prefix means before the variable again what is the use of this operator again it is also going to use uh, to increase the variable value by one right similarly decrement operator the same as increment, uh, uh, we can also decrement the value of the variable by one using the decrement okay. operator. Again, it is going to work on a single operand. Again, it is classified into two types. One is post increment 
another is pre increment if you are using this uh, minus minus operator as a suffix to its variable then it is called as a post increment and post increment means the operator is going to be placed after the variable name right after the variable name and in this case it will decrease the variable value by one similarly post decrement means you will use the operator as a prefix you will use the operator as a prefix to the variable right that means uh, you need to use this operator before the variable name right like this and what is the use of this operator it is going to decrease the value of the variable by one right so we understand the concept now you can see uh, unary operator is classified into two types increment and decrement pre increment means you will use the operator before the variable name post increment means you will use the operator after the variable name De pre decrement means you will use the decrement operator before the variable name and post decrement means you will use the operator after the variable name suppose integer x equals to 10 so you can use plus plus x or you can use x plus plus the x value will become 11 in this case you can use x minus 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 x or x minus minus in this case it will decrease the value of the variable by one <clears throat> right now let us understand uh, the example and let us understand some of the few more concepts uh, which are related to this uh, increment and decrement operators okay let me just go on now it is clearly visible to all of you yes sir okay okay see if i am creating an integer variable x value is 10 and i am doing this x plus plus so i am using this plus plus operator after the variable name or before variable name i am using it as a suffix to its variable that means i am using the variable name uh, i am using this operator after the variable name so that means which kind of operator uh, is this? This is post, post increment. increment. Right. So what happened in the case of a post increment? That we need to remember. See, when you are going to work with, so whenever you are going to work with uh, the increment and decrement operator, you need to remember five things. What are, you need to remember five steps. So what is step one? Right. Step one is, pre-operation, pre-operation, right? Step two is substitution. Step three is evaluation. Step four is assignment. And step five is post-operation. Right. So you can say this is step two because people are getting confused to while they are working with uh, this increment and decrement operators. So let me clarify your doubt so that you will get a better idea why, how and how exactly these operations are going to be executed. Right. So, so step one is a pre-operation. Pre-operation means is there any pre-increment or a pre-decrement operator used in your variable right that you need to check in this case is there any pre increment or pre increment operation is there no no that means the step one will not be performed in this case then it will substitute substitute means what is the x value x value is 10 so in this step x will be replaced as 10 right and the third step is evaluation. Is there any evaluation, any expression in this step? There is no expression or no uh, expression is there. So no evaluation. Fourth step is assignment. So what is the X value? X value is 10. So it will assign 10 to this result one. Then post operation. Then is there any post increment or a decrement operator in this case? Yes, post increment and a decrement operator is there. What it will do? It will increase the X value. So in this case, x value will become 11 right so now now you now let's uh, do one thing okay 
so this is the result variable right this is the result variable and this is the x variable right so in initially result variable is nothing uh, so once the assignment will be done then only result variable is going to hold the value but initially what x is holding x is holding 10 right so there is no pre increment uh, or pre decrement uh, uh, operator in this uh, example so pre increment or pre operation is not there substitution is there x will be substituted by 10 because current x value is 10 then evaluation no evaluation is there so what he will do he will uh, uh, he will not evaluate anything next is assignment what is the current value of x x current value is 10 so it will assign 10 to this result variable so what result variable will store 10 then it will increment the operation because the step is post operation so it will increment the value 10 to 11 so in this case if you execute this statement right so in x it will print you 11 and in result it will give you what what is there in result uh, 11 so in this case x will become 11 and result will become 10 now come to this part right right come to this part is there any is there any pre increment or pre decrement operation is there hello yeah. pre increment is there pre increment is there pre increment is there and what is the value of pre increment it will means it will increment the value substitution substitution means uh, first of all what is the y value y value is 10 so 10 means it will increment this value. Once it increment, what y will become 11, right? Then y will be substituted with 11. And then evaluation, no expression is there. Then assignment, this 11 will be assigned to result 2. So in this case, and after assignment, is there any post increment operation? No, there is no post increment operations, right? So when you execute this example, so what you will get, uh, what you will get, you will get y value as 11 and result to value as also 11. Uh, so let's run the application. So you will get x as 11, y as 10 in the first case. What our expectation uh, in result one, you will get 10. Yes, you are getting 10. In x, you are getting 11. Yes. And the, in the second case, in both the cases, you will get 11, right? Now, now let us see another example and try to observe the things in a better manner. Right? Suppose I am creating an integer result. Right? I am creating here two integer variables. Integer x equals to 10 and y equals to, uh, you can say 50. I am creating two. What I am doing here? I'm writing plus plus x plus y minus minus, right? And I'm just going to print the value of x, y, and a result, right? Result, I'm going to print the value of x, y, and result. So x, y, and a result. So x value is this. Now, why will do is this? Now, result will do is this, right? So in this case, now, now, so let, let's create a three buckets. One is for X, another is for Y, and another is for Rachel, right? What is the initial value of X? x value is 10 and y value is 15 and we have not assigned anything in the result so initially it will store zero right so as for our expression step one pre-operation is there any pre-operation in this statement no sorry no what there is, is there is this is a pre-operation yes. yes so first of all this pre-operation will be there right pre-operation means it will increment the value of x by 1. So yes. what will be x become here? x 11. will become 11. 11. Right? 
is there any other pre operation in this statement no no so this is done this statement is done now second is there a, uh, so the second step is substitution substitution means in this case it will substitute the x and y value what is the x value x value 11. is 11 11 right what is the y value y value 15. is 15 15 no. substitution is there evaluation is there any evaluation yes plus operator is there so it will evaluate this expression once it evaluate what the expression will become 26 okay. right this 26 is done then assignment this 26 is assigned to which variable result variable result variable right once the assignment is done is there any post operation yes 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 here is the post operation so post operation means it will decrement the y value by one so currently y value is 15 so what it will become 14. 14. 14. So that means if our understanding is perfect, then it should give me x value as 11, y value as 14, and result as 26. 25. 26. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Sorry? I didn't get it. How it is 26. Okay, let, let me explain once more. Okay. Let me explain you once more so that you will get the uh, how 26 right okay so so you just uh, you just uh, tell me so first one is what type of operation pre -operation. pre operation yes pre operation means first you need to check is there any pre increment operator in your expression is there any pre increment operator yes operator? there is there is there, there is. is so what is the use of this pre increment it will, it will increment, increment initially by one 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 so once it will increment the value by one so which variable value it will increment uh, x variable <clears throat> so once it will increment then what will be the current value of x what x will become x will become 11 11 is that clear yes okay second is the substitution right substitution means it will substitute the variables value right so it will substitute means what it will become this statement will become right this statement will become so it will substitute the x value what is x value now it is 11 11 right and what is After y 15. value 15 15 so is substitution 20. is done yes okay third step is evaluation is there any plus minus arithmetic operator yeah, there is an operator yeah yes <clears throat> so this evaluation that you need to do so once you evaluate what uh, the what will be the output of this evaluation 26 26 you are getting 26 evaluation is done <clears throat> right so yeah. once evaluation is done next one is assignment assignment means what whatever the value you have in the right hand side you will assign that value to the left hand side variable right Correct. So in this case what is the value of your expression 26 so that that means this 26 will be assigned to whom Re result Result. result. So result will become 26 or not? 26, correct. So after assignment, assignment is done, right? Then there is any post operation in this uh, expression? There is, there is a post operation. Yeah. So there is a post. So this is the uh, increment or a decrement? Increment. Sorry? Increment, increment. Not this minus minus, it is not. Oh, sorry, sorry, decrement, decrement, sorry. Decrement. Decrement. So, this decrement. decrement means it will decrement the value of the variable by one. Which variable value? Y value. So, if it decrement the y value, then what y will become? 14. 14. That means now you understand how x is 11, how y is 14, and how result is 26. Yeah. Now, if you run the application, then you will understand this thing x is 11 y is 14 and the result is 26 right so so whenever you are working with uh, this pre increment and post increment you need to remember these five steps mm, okay clear yeah. right but but the but one more thing that you also need to remember don't try to use this plus plus increment operator or minus minus increment in evaluation like this don't use like this why? Because the behavior might be changed 
if we are using the same plus plus operator multiple times in the expression in this expression we are using the plus operator only one we are using the uh, 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 this x variable only one time we are using this y variable only one time but you cannot predict the output if you are using the same operation or same operator multiple times in the expression like this sir yeah in what kind of situation this concept will be used right so that i will show you so basically you cannot you should not use this plus plus or minus minus operator multiple time in a expression then what kind of scenario you need to use this right so basically whenever you are working with a, any kind of a looping statement particularly on for loop then in that scenario you need to use this uh, looping statement right going forward when i will discuss for loop at that time i will show you for example let me i need to print the number from 1 to 10 right so i can write like this so you can see my loop will start from 0 it will end uh, when uh, i value become 9 right and it will each time it will increment the i value by one so here i'm using i plus plus so that means scenario like this you need to use the i plus plus then what is the uh, difference between this i plus plus and you might be one question sir i can also write the same thing using like this i equals to i plus one then what is the big deal of using i plus plus yes or no yeah yeah. So the difference is that you need to remember each operator while performing some operation will take some time. In this case, how many operator I am using? One operator. In this statement, how many operator I am using? Two operators, equals and plus. Right. That means if your loop is executing for thousand times, that means this if you are using this one, then your op op that particular operation will be thousand times. But if you are using this one, that means you can also write this statement inside the loop, right? Inside the loop, you can also like this. You can remove this, no issue, right? Right? You can write this. But the thing is that it will be evaluated to uh, if your loop is going to execute for thousand times, then this op then this plus operator will evaluate it thousand times. And this equal operator is also going to be evaluated. 2000 times, yeah. That means 2000 times, right? That means it will take more time. So in scenario like this, so instead of using this and this, because I'm not going, I'm not performing any complex operation with this. I'm just implementing the value of this variable by one. So whenever you are just implementing the variable of a value by one, then instead of writing y equals to i plus one, it is always better to write i plus plus i. Because it will reduce the number of operators involved in the expression. Is that clear? Yeah. Right. So you understand how this plus plus operator and how this minus minus operator works? Yes. yes. Okay. Right. right. Now the last operator that uh, in our category is, so let's see, we have discussed arithmetic operator. We have discussed the relational operator. We have discussed this logical operator. We have discussed bitwise operator. We have discussed assignment operator. And we have already discussed this unary operator. The last one is ternary operator. Let us understand this. So ternary operator, as the name says, it is going to work with the three operators, right? And the ternary operator is also called as a conditional operator. And actually, this ternary operator is the shorthand of EPL statement, right? If you are writing some EPL statement, instead of writing the EPL statement, you can represent the same using a ternary operator. The ternary operator work with three operands. The syntax is this. You have uh, some condition. This is the question mark and this is the colon, right? This question mark colon is nothing but your ternary operator. Right? This is nothing but your ternary operator. And you can see this is one uh, this is one operand or one condition this is another uh, condition or expression and this is another so in this case we have three parts yes or no so as it is going to work with the three operands so it is said to be a ternary operator then how this statement is going to be executed that we need to understand right so in this case 
first it will evaluate the condition right here you need to write some condition or expression which might uh, which is going to result either true or false so based on the condition either this expression is going to be executed or this expression is going to be executed if the condition is true then this expression is going to be executed and whatever the outcome come or whatever the result come that will be assigned to the variable right in this case if the condition is false then the second expression is going to be executed and whatever the outcome or output come from this expression that will be assigned to the destination variable right let us understand this with an example here you can see i have created a variable called 20 and i have created a variable called uh, b with the value 10 now my requirement is to find out the largest number between these two number right i need to find out which one is the largest number then in that case i'm uh, putting one condition here right i'm putting one condition here the condition is a greater than b this condition, this is nothing but one relational operator. We already discussed. What will be the output of a relational operator? Either true or false. In this case, this relational operator will give you output true or false. Anyone? True. True. Right? Because A is 20 and B is 10. 20 is greater than 10. The condition is true. If the condition is true, this expression is going to be executed and whatever the outcome come, that will be stored inside the result variable. That means what is there in this A? In this A, 20 is there. So 20 will be stored in the result variable. If this condition is false, then whatever the value present in the B variable, that will be stored inside the result variable. Right? In this case, the condition will become true and hence whatever the value stored in the A variable that is 20 will be stored in the result variable. So once you execute this program, you will see the output is 20. Right? You are getting this output 20. Now, yes, this ordinary operator like if else that I will also show you. Right? Say so now. So I told you this ternary operator is the short end of EPL statement. EPL statement we have not discussed yet. Uh, in our next session, I'm going to discuss this EPL's conditional statement. But for now, I'm just writing how it is the uh, short end for EPL statement. So I'm writing A greater than B, right? If this condition is executed, so what I'm going to print, I will print here result equals to A, right? And else, I can also line, uh, I will print here B, right? So you can see, so with ternary operator, I have written only two line of code. I will get the output. But using EPL's condition, I have to write this much of code. 